Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mega Projects. This one, military bases on the moon. What more could you ask for? These are the ones I enjoy the most. I hope you like them too. Let's jump in. But before we do, this video is brought to you by Brilliant. What is Brilliant? Brilliant is brilliant, and Brilliant is a problem-solving based website and app with a hands-on approach. Improve your STEM skills while having a great time learning at brilliant.org forward slash mega. More on them in just a little bit, but if you'd like to get started right now, I mean, click the link below. It does support the show. Do you ever get the sense that humanity isn't quite where we thought it would be? Yes, I know 2020 has thrown up some truly global dilemmas that will most likely set us back a little bit, but weren't we supposed to be a little bit further ahead when we enter the third decade of the new millennium? There were the flying cars and those hoverboards from Back to the Future. Where is interplanetary space travel for humans? Why aren't we on Mars yet? Come on! But the question we're going to focus on today is, well, didn't we think there'd be a base on the moon by now? Again. I mean, come on! While, of course, we've never come close to establishing a colony on the moon or even a temporary base on the moon, that doesn't mean there haven't been specific plans for it. It's probably no surprise that, like we do on Mega Projects often, we need to travel back in time to the depths of the Cold War for this radical and wildly ambitious idea that was known as Project Horizon. Humans have been staring up at the moon for as long as we have existed, and for a good portion of that time, we had absolutely no idea what it really was. Like the sun and the visible planets, the moon found a place in ancient mythology and was even considered to be a god to sun. Slowly, we began to understand that the moon is not a god. It took us a while to get there, and in the early 17th century, Galileo Galilei's telescopes revealed a rough, rocky surface, not exactly like Earth, but not entirely unlike it either. It was also around this time that we have the first written reference about the possibility of some kind of settlement on the moon getting a little ahead of ourselves there. 331 years before Apollo 11 touched down on the surface of our celestial neighbor, Bishop John Wilkins penned a piece entitled A Discourse Concerning a New World and Another Planet, in which he predicted we would one day not only send people to the moon, but also establish some kind of colony. I mean, we probably will, it's almost certain, right? Unless we get destroyed before that happens, which... I mean, it is 2020, we're just waiting for the asteroid to show up. Fast forward to the 1950s, and the world was slowly emerging from the shell shock that was World War II. We had created and deployed the most terrifying weapon ever known for the first time in human existence. A small group of people had the power to destroy the world in the blink of an eye. Perhaps with this in mind, our gaze began to shift skywards. Now we all know what happened next. Sputnik, Yuri Gagarin, Neil Armstrong, and of course, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Surely humans were on the precipice of something extraordinary. Surely we were going to be living on the moon in no time at all. Well, we're not. So what happens? Project Horizon was a study commissioned by the US government in 1959 to explore the feasibility of building a manned base on the moon. At this point, the Department of the Army, Department of the Navy, and Department of the Air Force held joint responsibility for the US space program. The paper, titled Project Horizon, a US Army study for the establishment of a lunar military outpost, first appeared on the 8th of June 1959, and its stated aims read, The lunar outpost is required to develop and protect potential United States interests on the moon to develop techniques in moon-based surveillance of the Earth and space, in communications relay, and in operations on the surface of the moon to serve as a base for exploration of the moon, for further exploration into space, and for military operations on the moon if required, and to support scientific investigations on the moon. That was quite the mess, but basically what they're trying to do is cover as many bases as possible. Excuse the pun. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you feel about a military base on the moon, President Eisenhower rejected the project and instead placed his faith in the civilian agency NASA by transferring almost all space programs to it. Project Horizon was at that time highly classified, and it remained that way until 2014, when it was finally declassified. And though nothing ever came of it, the report is astonishing in both its scale and imagination. But what is really interesting is the sense of urgency, perhaps best encapsulated 
encapsulated by the section that reads, To be second to the Soviet Union in establishing an outpost on the moon would be disastrous to our nation's prestige and in turn to our democratic philosophy. Make no mistake about it, for some time, this was a plan of the utmost urgency. And hey, whether you're trying to figure out how to put nukes on the moon, hopefully not, dear civilian, or trying to figure out how to develop some professional skills or broaden your understanding of the world, I recommend today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem-solving based website and app with what? A hands-on approach. That's a better way to learn. They've got over 60 interactive courses in maths, science, and computer science. Now you've heard me talk about Brilliant before, whether you're a student looking to get ahead or a professional keen on building some skills, you have to check out Brilliant. It's excellent. Maybe you've wanted to learn about neural networks, essentially how computers can program themselves. Well, Brilliant have a course on that, and it teaches you through easy-to-access puzzles, and it does it in plain English. There's no reading a paragraph a dozen times and then being like, oh god, what? <laughs> What have I just read? I've read it six times and I still don't understand. Brilliant are just like, yeah, do this puzzle and then read the paragraph afterwards. It's not even a paragraph, it's a few lines. And you're like, oh, okay, I get it. I never thought I'd get neural networks, but now I do. Boom. And that's just one example. There's loads of great stuff on their platform, including daily challenges, which are a great way to flex your gray matter every day. And that rhymes. Look, Brilliant is a great compliment to watching educational videos like this one. It'll help you master even complex technical subjects. So if you want to support mega projects, and I'd like you for doing that, and get unlimited access to all of Brilliant's in-depth maths and science courses, you can head on over to brilliant.org forward slash mega to get 20% off that annual premium subscription. And if enough people do that, I might even start calling it math instead of maths. Just kidding, I'll never do that. Let's get back to the video. Now, it must be said that much of the Moon Report is pretty entertaining, this, this sort of wonderful, casual vagueness to the whole thing. I mean, how exactly were they going to build nuclear reactors on the Moon? But it's important to remember that the scientists who wrote this paper knew that the technology was not available at the time, but they felt certain it would be coming shortly. 70 years later, well, let's just say we're still waiting. But those scientists predicted the base could be set up by 1965 and fully operational by the following year, with 12 soldiers stationed there. That was just seven years from when they released the paper. If you think about how long everything seems to take these days, it's extraordinary they believed that they could accomplish it all so quickly. The initial landing would have included just two men in April 1965, who would then be guided to a depot area where the build-up of equipment had already begun. This would have been done by a series of cargo deliveries that would have started in January 1965 and would have totaled 61 Saturn A1 and 88 Saturn A2 rocket launchers up until the end of 1966. These trips would have transported 220 tons of cargo to the moon and because it's mega projects, that's the weight of two blue whales. The key to the entire operation would be what I'll only refer to as space tractors, but the report calls them lunar vehicles. These vehicles would provide a dazzling array of purposes for the men on the moon, including moving of lunar material, excavation of subsurface trenches, heavy cargo handling, and other mover functions. Oh, and they would also be where those two poor souls slept when they slaved away to build a moon base in record-breaking time, around six months the scientists envisioned. They were also quite descriptive about how exactly the base would look. The outposts would be cylindrical metal tanks 3 meters in diameter and 6.1 meters in length, with special double-walled thermos bottle type vacuum tanks and special insulating material in the space between the walls. The living quarters would be sunk into the ground to provide a warmer temperature within. As I briefly mentioned earlier, the moon base would be powered by nuclear reactors, four of them to be precise, two of which would be housed in the same building as the soldiers. Considering what an apt absolute nightmare radiation poisoning can be. It's not a good time. I would have loved to see how they would have worked around that one. The report estimated that the total cost of Project Horizon over an eight and a half year period would be six billion dollars, about $53.5 billion today, or $700 million, $6.2 billion per year. Though the wording was done in such a way that an absolutely vast overspend would not have been a surprise.
Each man on the base would receive three quarts of water per day, that's 2.8 liters, but they theorized that through recycling, this could be lowered. Ideally, they would use water either already on the moon or that could be captured through the atmosphere for washing and cleaning, something they probably would have struggled with had the project ever gone ahead. The majority of the food would come in dehydrated form, but the report makes special mention about the importance of vegetables and how a hydroponic area to grow them could be quickly established. This would use human waste as nutrients, and eventually plant waste and algae could be used to feed poultry. Yes, along with organic vegetables, there were also plans to have chicken and fish on the moon. The report even goes as far as recommending two varieties that they should take, Daphnia and Mollusk, both of which feed on algae. When the soldiers stepped out of the base, they would be fully kitted out in a spacesuit not entirely dissimilar to the early suits used in the Apollo missions, except for a very important difference. For whatever reason, images included in the report seem to have the astronauts wearing some sort of ice skates. It's probably safe to assume this was not a style factor, and if anything, it shows just how limited the understanding about the surface of the moon was at the time. A medical facility would also be included that would come with a self-isolation chamber where those suffering from psychiatric episodes could be placed. <laughs> you know, it's a bit of a worrying mission when they have to have a special place for that. Basically, scientists were not exactly sure what the effects of space travel and being away from the Earth would have on them for so long, so they were just preparing for every eventuality. The chamber would come with its own toilet, a bed, a door, and a window that could be both locked from the outside, which, well, that sounds charming. <laughs> No sooner had the base been set than it would be supplied with weapons to defend it from a Soviet overland invasion. Now, not only do we love just the general absurdity of the video today, but to go as far as to assume that the Soviets would be in a position to launch a small army, then start a war on the moon, it's pretty brilliant. The base would be defended by unguided Davy Crockett's, which were tactical nuclear recallless weapons and Claymore mines, which were anti-personnel mines that could be placed around the perimeter. As I said much earlier in the video, Project Horizon got no further than the one report published in 1959. There have been numerous ideas, concepts, and theories over the years, but our wait for a moon base, it goes on. It is becoming increasingly likely that the first manned settlement on the moon might, in fact, be privately funded rather than government-run, or perhaps a hybrid of the two. The Moon Village was an idea that emerged in 2015, which encouraged international public and private investors, scientists, engineers, universities, and businessmen to work together to develop some kind of settlement on the moon. Both the US and China have stated their interest, but the project remains an open forum concept. Jan Vorner, Director General of the European Space Agency, has said that the village would be an understanding, not a single facility. He went on to add that this would be an important first step for us to come together as a species and develop our knowledge. Considering how divided we seem to be in 2020, I'd say that this might actually go a long way. As for Project Horizon, when you read through the declassified report from 70 years ago, it's hard not to have a bit of a little chuckle. Some of the ideas stated sound so outlandish, you find it difficult to imagine they came from expert scientific minds. But maybe the problem wasn't actually with the scientists back in the late 1950s, maybe it's with humanity in the 21st century. The second half of the last century saw unimaginable changes in everything from space travel to communication, from home comforts to transportation. But there is an argument that our technological advances have narrowed and plateaued. We have state-of-the-art smartphones seemingly released every month, but is this really changing the world? Are we still pushing the boundaries of innovation and exploration? In 1959, a group of scientists felt confident enough that a moon base could be established in just seven years. Call them ambitious, call them absurd, but that was some truly visionary thinking. Perhaps today we could do with a few more absurdly ambitious projects like this to push humanity forward once more. A moon base feels like something we're destined for at some point, and despite our slow and erratic path to it, surely it's a question of when, and not if. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, smash that like button below. Also, if you want to support the show, which is fantastic, please do go over and try out Brilliant. There is a link below. And thank you for watching.